Welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Flashing and Tuning. I'm in the process of removing, uh, I'm not even sure what this is, I'm not sure if it's a 5.0 or 5.7, I'll have to go back and check my notes, but um, this is a fairly large boat, it's got a uh, V8 engine, and I'm about to remove it from this, uh, from the uh, bilge area. Um, it's carbureted, it's, it's got a carburetor so it's not fuel injected, it does have the uh, Thunderbolt ignition system with the uh, knock sensor module on the side. So it's got uh, knock sensor controlled ignition. Uh, I don't. It's do, it does not have. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they call those. Uh, uh, they make a new fangle riser where it's uh, where the gasket. Uh, it's called a dry. I think it's called dry joint. Yeah, dry joint riser. And uh, the dry joints are less prone to leaking water into the exhaust. These are not dry joints. If you had a dry joint, you'd have a little hump right there going down, and that's your separate joint for your water keeps the water and the exhaust joint separate um, I don't see any other thing um, that catches my eye I do see a funky water connection from there from that riser or from that exhaust manifold over to the uh, intake manifold that I hadn't seen that before that's one way to get water from the engine over into the uh, exhaust um, kind of odd uh, it's weird uh, normally you don't want to do that because that would mean you're always pumping water out of your engine into the exhaust and it doesn't allow the engine to reach uh, to me it doesn't it, if you're always dumping water out of your intake it does allow the engine to reach full temperature I'll have to look into that more um, other than that I don't see anything uh, really really uh, that stands out to me um, just like the uh, under wires for the level sensor when this thing's broken off you got your connector for your boat harness back there on the back um, i'm familiar with the, that, that coil wiring all that's no big deal there's a missing coal the, the wire from the coal to the center of the distributor cap's missing that's all i can really say for now uh, first first thing we do to tackle this uh removal is uh disconnect stuff off the riser there get that freed off get the two risers freed Disconnect the electrical connectors off this, off that side, and then uh, free up the uh, the boots for the uh, risers going to the downs. I guess the down uh, down tube, and then I'm gonna uh, pull these risers off separate from the engine. It just makes it a lot lighter and a lot, a lot easier to manage with those off. They're so, they're so heavy. Uh, plus, it gives me more room to maneuver this engine inside this tight bay. What I may have to do, um, if you look up here, you see how I'm almost. Uh, the, the, the hull of the boat is about almost halfway past the engine. Uh, so in order to get this out, I may have to, uh, I may have to remove all the front accessories and that'll clear me up about, looks like about uh, eight or nine inches. The, the front of the block's right about there. So all that's being freed up. So I'll uh, have, may have to remove all that to get it out. I won't know until I get into this, so. I'll stop the video now and uh, record later, later, record more later when I figure something out. This is a close up of the uh, throttle linkage and the transmission linkage on this uh, on this boat. And uh, just trying to make, get a close up to see how everything's organized. There's your shock absorber. And you got some kind of, it's like somebody used a paper clip to hold that in. Up here, you got a piece of wire, another paper clip, it looks like maybe. I'll replace those with uh, uh, cotter pins. Just trying to show what, how it looks before I take it apart. Here's your your uh, shift kill switch. All right, in this video, I'm continuing with the uh, removal of this uh, small block V8 from a uh, large boat. Um, as you can see, I've removed the uh, exhaust manifold on that side to make it easier to get to the uh, rear, rear engine mount bolts and the uh, engine mount bolt on the right down there. Um, I find that moving, removing the exhaust manifolds when you take it out just makes it uh, more maneuverable, less, uh, less bulky, easier to get out. Um, Plus, it gives you more access, easier access to the motor mount bolts. That's the main reason I do this. Um, putting it back in, I'm not so sure because uh, 
you need um I'm, if i run it outside the boat i need the exhaust manifolds back on it but um that's a decision i'll make later um what i've done so far is i removed the alternator uh from up in here there was a uh, three bolts one two three holding it onto the side of the head and um actually i think there was one two and then one down below uh, i moved that the alternator and its bracket as an assembly took the wires off the back of the alternator first also removed the uh, there was a uh, idler pulley and the water pump was right in here it was held on to the front of that bracket by three bolts and one down low and uh I, then i removed the water pump i mainly did all that so I, i'm trying to make room so that i can move this engine forward and hit this uh, bulkhead here uh, so, I don't, well, don't, so i don't hit the bulkhead and give me room to move it forward to get it out um let's see what else right now i'm struggling to get this other exhaust manifold the two of the bolt heads are rusted and so i can't get a wrench on them can't get a bolt extractor on them uh, they're too far gone i've drilled out the heads on both of them already to a point but it's still not breaking free so i'm about five minutes away from making a decision to pull this motor with that exhaust manifold still on it um the, the uh decision will depend on how hard it is to get the bolt the motor mount bolt out from under off with it in the way and that's where i'm at um i'll make another video when i get it uh, free and discuss what else i removed okay continuing on i finally got the exhaust manifold off this side i had to basically uh use an oscillating saw and drill bits and, and chew the head off the bolt and then i had to wedge a crowbar between the cylinder head and the exhaust manifold and kind of wedge them out and, and pop the what's left of the bolt heads off so i finally got this off um, like I say, the reason I get the exhaust motor pulled off, it gives me access to that motor mount bolt there. And there's one on the other side. I'm almost ready to get this motor out. Um, looks like this thing got broke off by the, it was already kind of weak anyway. Um, so going forward, I'm, uh, like I say, the two front motor mount bolts are off. The, uh, I took the gear oil, the gear oil reservoir, which is right there. Just unstrapped it from this bracket. And then uh, there's the line going to, out to the out drive. That's going to stay in the boat. There's no need to take it out. Some of them have a quick disconnect fitting somewhere in the line about right there, but this one doesn't have that. So I'm just going to leave the reservoir sitting in the boat for now. All right, so going forward, I'm going to hook the, uh, this is the main harness, boat to engine harness. It was connected right there. Pull that loose. You can see I've got several ground wires on the stud down in there on that, on that, on the side of the engine. And then I've got, more right there on that stud the, all of them are negatives once that's loose then i got to take the two power steering lines off i'm going to disconnect the water hose from the this is your power steering cooler right here this cylindrical device i'm going to disconnect the water hose with this clamp pull that hose off that, that power steering cooler will go out with the engine along with this this power steering hose this power steering hose here and then that one's your high pressure line that uh, Goes straight from your power steering pump that's coming out with the motor too so once these two are disconnected and the wet wires are off the studs um the motor will be ready to lift out oh in the water line and that's that's it so should have it out in about 30 minutes oh and there's some wires down there on the starter i believe they stay uh they're a part of the harness on the engine so they stay on the starter All right, this engine is ready to be lifted out of the bilge in this boat. Um, since the last video, I've disconnected the power steering hoses off the power steering uh, ratchet, rack and pinion gearbox. I've uh, taken the wires off the uh, studs on that side. I took the wires off the studs on the other side. There's two little connectors that are right here. Let's see, these two right here went to plugs right there. They're they're polarized so you can't put them wrong so that that goes back to the back in there um oh i disconnected the throttle linkage off the carburetor and i removed the carburetor because i'm, I'm gonna have to attach this chain slung low on the motor because i don't have any this is a this is a very tall boat and i don't have a lot of height above this uh the bow of this boat to get the motor motor up above the bow so that i can pull the boat out from under it my my chain hoist is right there and i don't know how much room i got i guess i'll find out when i get up in here but for now this uh i'm attaching the chain and about to lift this engine out of the out of the boat so 
Oh, and also remove the rear motor mounts. I forgot to mention that in the last video. There's two bolts in the back. Uh, there's one over there. I think you can see it right there. Uh, the, the heads are three quarter inch. Uh, those are what hold the rear engine mounts down on the uh, transom unit. And uh, so I got those out. So I'm about to attach the chain and lift this motor up out of the boat. All right, the engine is now removed from the boat and uh, I placed it on my uh, wooden uh, in, wooden engine cart that I used to roll uh, engines into my shop with. And uh, once I get them in my shop, I lift them up in the air with my engine hoist, and I strip the the uh, bell housing and the flywheel off the back, and then mount it on an engine stand like you can see those motors over there. So this one came out of the boat. Uh, once the exhaust manifold was off, it was not that hard, but it did take a long time to get the exhaust manifold loose on the uh, driver's side which would be the passenger side of a car. But anyway, um, I built a special wooden cart so that I could uh, lower the motor from the uh, engine engine uh, chain uh, hoist down on this cart to protect the bottom of it from, uh, there's a, some of them have a fitting directly on the bottom of the oil pan that is for your drain, drain uh, oil drain line. That's it right there, running right through there and attaches to a fitting on the very bottom drain plugs. I mean, bottom of the drain, the oil pan. So you don't want to set the engine directly down top of that. So that's what this car is for. It uh, keeps the oil pan up off the bottom. It also allows me to roll it around pretty easy once I get it off the truck. So I rolled it right in here. So I'm about to lift it up and start taking this thing apart. Uh, next video you see will be, it'll be on the engine stand and uh, ready to start this assembly.